Well, good evening. Looking at uh, some of the names that are here tonight. Thanks so much for coming in on this webinar for InterNACHI. And it looks like I might have some relatives on. I'm not sure who James Meadows is, but uh, great last name. And uh, hopefully you're English Irish, just like I am. So, and uh, well, tonight we're going to be talking uh, about uh, one of my favorite subjects, which is the new construction and 11 month warranty uh, inspections. And I'm going to share my screen and we're going to talk a little bit about uh, these two uh, types of inspections and how unique they are to other inspections, while they're similar in many ways, unique in other ways. And I think you'll find them the same. Uh, but just to give you a little background, uh, they said to give a little biography as we started out here. And uh, as you can see down below, my name is Randy Meadows, and I own, uh, I'm the owner of Focus Inspection Authority, LLC, here in Southern California. We're actually out of the Orange County area. We cover Orange County and the beach cities all up and down Southern California coast. So we also take in Northern San Diego County and up uh, into LA County along the coast as well. And then we go inland to Riverside County, some of San Bernardino County as well. And currently we have five inspectors with us. Uh, and uh, of course with the market, everything's a little downside. So we're trying to keep everybody busy, but so far so good. The market's kicking up a little bit down here in Southern California, especially with a high-end buyer. So we're looking pretty good on that. Uh, my history uh, and uh, the reason why I like uh, this particular topic this evening that we're going to be talking about is because that's where I basically uh, got my starting in inspection. So I was in the fire department, Los Angeles County Fire Department for a number of years, and then I took my retirement. But before I took my retirement, I was a firefighter paramedic and then also did inspections for the County of Los Angeles and studied um, building sciences and uh, also forensics. So many times we would go in after the fire and uh, determine uh, certain causes of fire. So it was quite fascinating for me. After I took my retirement then, I found a niche you know, in the inspection industry and basically started with uh, inspecting for builders here in Southern California doing uh, solely warranty inspections for them. And the reason for that was a little different take on this particular industry, which also affects the reason why we need to be on, a, uh, you know, on high alert with regards to our 11 month inspections. And that is because of the defect litigations that are solicited heavily here in California by a number of law firms. So they solicit homeowners starting many times after the third or fourth month after they purchased their homes. And unfortunately, many of these individuals will answer because they're just not aware of the first year fit and finish warranty that builders offer. And that could be quite exasperating down the road since they find out once they've entered these litigations that it puts their warranty at stake and it decreases, almost immediately decreases the value of their home because it now becomes public knowledge that they are claiming that their home, although it's a brand new build, is actually a defective home. That's what they're saying in writing. So when they go to sell the home, if they complete that type of litigation, it actually affects the resale value here in California. So you can talk to some of the real estate agents that have their perspective on those type of resales. But uh, individuals answering such uh, inspections, what we would do is start by trying to help them to see that they indeed do have quite an extensive warranty by the builder. And even if it's not just the first year, even if it's the second, third or fourth year that they've ended these litigations, uh, the builder has extensive warranty on their construction. And so helping uh, homeowners to understand the value of their home and the construction uh, warranty is really something that uh, inspectors uh, can be of a great value uh, for uh, their clients. So anyway, that's how I got started in this business and then uh, continued uh, doing these uh, types of inspections, probably, I don't know, a couple thousand of them. And then we had COVID and COVID basically closed down all the court systems. And uh, that was about 80% of my business. So we just massively opened up to the public with regards to real estate sales. 
And that's when the market was, of course, uh, going crazy with regards to sales. And it was the perfect time to enter and start getting friends in the real estate industry. And we built up our clientele. And then we started hiring uh, additional inspectors to assist us. So basically, that's the story of Focus Home Inspection. And, uh, and that's why I have, I think, a more of a propensity and a passion for this inspection that we're going to be talking about uh, this evening. And that is primarily the 11th month, what we call the 11th month home warranty inspection. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen. I'm just going to cover a couple of things starting because we've got about, you know, 50 minutes or so to talk about. I'm trying to jam in as much information as I can into this uh, webinar so that hopefully if you're an inspector in this area or around the country, uh, you'll be able to see a little bit of the nuances of our warranty inspections here in Southern California, which is a little different than probably some other parts of the country, depending on what builders are that you're working with. So let me go here and see if I can share my screen here. And I know I've got backup in the back and AJ, if it doesn't come up right, just let me know. So let's start with this screen right here. All right. So basically I'm starting here because this is the beginning of it all. Uh, if you're an InterNACHI inspector, why you're probably pretty familiar with these two tabs, these logos, which is the 11 month warranty inspection logo. And then of course the new construction inspector uh, logo. Now, if you probably, uh, you probably noticed this right away that the use of these logos by InterNACHI uh, is requirement for them is basically identical. And you're going to see that, you know, uh, the use and requirements of the 11th month is the 10 different courses that you have to complete. And down below on the new construction inspector, it's the 10, same thing, uh, 10 uh, different courses that you want to fi uh, finish in order to have the privilege to use the logo. So we'll just keep it up here and uh, just basically review real quickly. Everybody knows, you know, the 25 standards every inspector should know. And really uh, those are very instrumental. If you're really familiar with those 25 standards, you're going to be pretty successful right away with trying to identify areas that will be of value to the client in calling out for the builder's repair. Uh, the 11 month warranty inspection. And uh, what is it? Uh, well, every builder, uh, for the most part, offers what they call a fit and finish warranty. And that fit and finish is basically related to a new, new home that a person is going to move into and they're gonna be like the driver of a new car. And as they drive that new car, they're living there 24 hours a day, they're looking and admiring their beautiful new home, and they start noticing things that don't appear to be quite right. And uh, so the builder usually will tell them, look, you've got a year to tell us whatever you want, and we'll come in and fix it. And for the most part, that is true. Uh, usually builders uh, will uh, repair just about anything, not everything, but just about everything with a new home build within the first year. Now, there are some builders that offer what they call a two-year fit and finish, and uh, they're um, uh, more rare, but uh, they're out there. And the reason why they do that is for, number one, uh, to increase you know, their, um, uh, their service to their clients. They want them to be happy. And um, number two, uh, a number of things start to uh, settle in a house, and sometimes they don't settle completely in just the first year. And uh, homeowners, new homeowners, start to uh, realize that, hey, my house is changing, you know, before my eyes, in fact. And uh, another reason why this warranty is in place is because builders know that primarily they use what we call in the industry wet material. And uh, what that means is just new material, it's wet and it's drying and there's a lot of caulk all over the place, you know, caulking in every wall and every little uh, crevice of the home. And unfortunately here in Southern California, that starts to dry out fairly quickly because of the uh, temperature and the humidity issues that we have here. 
And before you know it, at every uh, angle of the doors and in the window sills, there's cracking of the caulking, and people start to think that their home is basically just falling apart. So sometimes they start to panic, and that's when these litigation attorneys start to mail out in mass these letters soliciting, uh, you know, litigations either class action suit or civil action suit against builders. And unfortunately, people start to answer them. So um, the 11th month warranty or two year warranty on some, uh, on some cases is very, very helpful for builders. And unfortunately, uh, sometimes builders don't make them quite aware, the client's quite aware of how extensive it is. So we try to do that when we go in for our advertisement of our inspections. In fact, we have advertisements that we send out uh, for individuals that have recently purchased homes and remind them that it is their responsibility, not the builder's responsibility to inspect their home towards the end of the first year. And if you don't know what you're looking for or you don't know what to look for, then we're the service uh, to provide that for you. And it seems to be uh, fairly uh, well accepted by the public. Uh, so then as you look at the other requirements here, you know, it does cover residential plumbing, performing residential electrical expansions, uh, ex uh, inspections, roof inspections, HVAC systems, the structural issues that you'll find on the outside and the inside of the home, exterior inspections, and then going into the attic insulation, ventilation, interior, and the rest of uh, deck inspections and uh, moisture intrusion issues. Uh, so that's basically uh, what the courses entail. Now I'm gonna just open up here a document. And AJ, can you see that document? I'm not seeing any document. We're still on okay. your Google Chrome. Okay, hold on just a second. Let me just make uh, a change here in this. One moment, I have to stop. I have to kind of switch out of this, I think. Hold on just a second. And share screen. <laughs> okay, I mean, I found what I want. Okay, is the uh, warranty book up? Yep, you got it. Okay, cool. All right, so uh, basically, just kind of a call out for a standard home warranty book that people get. And uh, it helps people to appreciate that besides the one year warranty items, which tend to be quite extensive and a long drawn out dialogue in their book. So we're not gonna cover that. But I thought I'd bring this up because this is a popular builder here in Southern California. And they have some other extensions to their uh, fit and finish warranty on certain components that homeowners should know about. So even after the first fit and finish warranty year, uh, they have some uh, coverage on other things. Like for example, the plumbing and the sewer area here. Uh, this builder gives four years from the close of original escrow date. So what that means, the commencement date is the date that they close escrow. That's the, that's the time clock. Time clock starts and uh, people have to be aware that they have a limitation by law according to what they call SB 800 series of laws here in California, that uh, they can claim uh, the need for repair on these items. And the first thing is plumbing and sewer systems. Now, when we're doing a first year fit and finish warranty, we also try to add on the ancillary service of a sewer scope, uh, sewer scope inspection. And people sometimes will say, well, it's a brand new home. And we say exactly, and that's why we are recommending it because during the construction phase, as many people might not know, that uh, these contractors will pour all kinds of stuff down the sewer, uh, not just drywall mud, you know, that finds its way into the sewer line and then starts to dry and then is a propensity for uh, blockage and problems within uh, just a couple of years after people purchase the home. But there's also, um, you know, uh, construction debris that gets uh, unfortunately put down those sewers when they're 
many times putting in the toilets or putting uh, in the uh, tubs and showers. And unfortunately, sometimes if you know contractors and sometimes uh, these individuals that work on homes, why, uh, if they're not getting paid enough or if they're getting pushed by the um, uh, uh, boss, you know, on the job trying to pick up the pace, sometimes they rebel and, you know, they'll put stuff in the walls that you won't be able to see, but sometimes they'll put it down the drain. So, you know, these uh, type of inspections come in very handy. And interestingly, it's a 50-50 chance that we actually find construction debris and many, depending on the builder, but a 50-50 chance that you'll find something. And if you don't find something, then you'll have the peace of mind that is clear. We do find something, it's up to the builder to correct it, not the homeowner, which is a real big upsell for them. And uh, besides the debris, sometimes there's the compaction in soil uh, during the construction period that uh, sometimes will affect the sewer line, either uh, starting to, make a belly in the line or even cracking a sewer line or fracturing it. So uh, these are, are really good opportunities for inspectors to give a thorough inspection of the home. It's a brand new home. Let's just make sure that it's what a brand new home. Uh, cracks in exterior pathways, driveways, hardscaping, sidewalls, sidewalks. Usually builders will give up to four years for that because they're settling. Uh, going on in these homes and uh, much of the hardscape that was put in by the builder, not by a side contractor or a second contractor, but they will continue to perform uh, warranty work up to four years. Now that warranty work usually is, so we can call it out, usually here in California, if the crack in the hardscape that the builder has put down is one quarter inch width or there is a variance in height, so deflection. And if that's the case, then it becomes, you know, a potential tripping hazard and the builder then comes out under the warranty and re will replace or repair uh, the area of defect. Uh, manufactured products, remember that manufactured products on the 11th month warranty inspection is all under the manufacturer. So not really the builder, although the builder obligates itself usually to assist the homeowner in receiving the warranty uh, repairs by the manufacturer. So say for example, you have your, all your kitchen appliances that have been installed, maybe they're Whirlpool or something else, the builder will help them through Whirlpool, their Whirlpool representative to come out and repair any defective manufactured product. Same thing with the HVAC system, the windows, the faucets. And what's interesting and beautiful about the faucets, you know, usually builders here in California are putting in Moen faucets same thing with other uh, manufacturers, but Moen offers a lifetime guarantee uh, with regards to the uh, parts of the faucet or if the finish of the faucets, you know, are starting to decrode or show some sign of defect, uh, they can get a free replacement the first year and the second year and the 10th year. Uh, the builder will help them on the first year uh, with not just the parts and the labor, but going forward after the first year, uh, homeowners can still receive the parts by just calling Moen, their 800 number, and sending them usually a picture of the defect, and Moen then sends out the parts for free, even a complete faucet for them if it's still under their warranty. Uh, let's see, uh, the second or third area here is this noise for attached units. This is basically for condos, and we do do a number of condos, uh, and that's really a good place to advertise because many times those condos, if you know within the first year that they all sold, you know you've got a huge market there uh, to advertise towards. And um, that's why this part is in there, noise for attached units. There is a certain noise variance uh, with regards to attached units that California uh, gets upon builders. And so sometimes we don't usually hear this very much, but sometimes people say, hey, this wall, which is a common wall, you know, I can hear my neighbors over there and if we can replicate, you know, anything and usually the neighbors into the inspection as well because it's a common wall. And we can sometimes get them a reevaluation of insulation. And of course the infrared cameras come in real handy when you're doing those types of inspections. Uh, going back uh, to this line here, the operation of irrigation and drainage systems. Uh, this is only a one-year warranty finish uh, covers that as well. And we're gonna see some pictures later on. I'll show you some of the defects that we've found 
with regards to the irrigation drainage systems that have been put in by the builders. And the builders actually come back and they repair or replace the irrigation systems that are defective. Even the plants, uh, if plants, you know, as a result of the irrigation system died the first year, most builders will actually replace the plants outside. So it's a really good warranty, extensive on that as well. Uh, wood posts, of course, everybody knows about wood posts that are basically on ground level. And if they're not protected, then they start to have premature wood rot. Uh, we're looking for those things. Unreasonable corrosion on metal fences or steel fences or gates. Those components are covered for four years. The wood posts are covered for two years by this builder. Uh, deterioration of the building surfaces on exterior with regards to paint and stain. They actually have a five-year warranty. So sometimes we go out and the first year we see premature fading of certain components on the exterior. Here in California, they tell people by the Builders Association that you should have your wood exterior wood components repainted every five to six years. What's of interest to me is that this builder gives a five-year warranty uh, with regards to those surfaces that it should not be premature in a deficiency, deterioration or deficiency. Now, uh, we find sometimes the uh, deterioration, even in the first year, sometimes these uh, structures will have, uh, you know, um, uh, side panels, you know, on their windows, uh, certain trim parts, wood trim parts, and they are already fading at the first year. The builder will come out and repaint it. It's because uh, the wood uh, feature was not prepped right. So the builder accepts responsibility for that and they'll come out and do some repairs on that. So if you find that, uh, why it's something you can call out for first year fit and finish warranty. Landscaping, uh, as we mentioned earlier, that builders will cover their plants and other organic materials for the first year. Uh, and they also, interesting is the dryer duct. Uh, this is a kind of a common thing where sometimes the dryer ducts are defective. They're not you know, installed correctly, uh, whoever was hired to do that particular component. And so they have a special warranty just on the dryer ducts. And it goes for two years, not just the one year. And then you have down below the big coverage, which is the fit and finish warranty, which is only one year. And it's just about anything and everything. There are some exceptions to the rule. So what are some of the exceptions? Well, uh, the builders uh, basically will not cover obviously anything that the homeowner did. Like for example, scuff marks inside the home. Uh, you go in and you see, well, they have little children and out here in California, they use um, you know, a flat paint, which uh, probably everywhere they do for the majority of the house and little children put their fingers on it. And then people go to try to wash the fingerprints off the flat paint and it just completely uh, ruins the paint finish. And they're trying to bail, uh, you know, blame the builder. Well, the builder says, no, you know, we gave you a explanation in our warranty book about the paint. It is a flat paint and it's an entry level paint, they call it. So if you're going to do a more of a, um, uh, you know, semi-gloss in your house or an eggshell, usually people try to upgrade and put an eggshell paint. So it's more conducive to cleaning if you have little children running around the house. But this is kind of an overview of the warranty book in itself of uh, most builders and uh, the time limits on things. Of course, you know, down here is the big one, the fit and finish warranty down below, and then the other extensive warranties. And then we'll just cover one other thought here on these warranties that homeowners should know. And that is after the fourth warranty, fourth year warranty where certain components you know are done like uh, the plumbing and some of the electrical things that are are done out of the builder's warranty they still have five major points of warranty on construction warranty and that is uh, roof leaks in wall plumbing leaks cracking of their exterior stucco at one eighth in general and cracking of any interior drywall at one eighth of an inch in width and then foundational cracks at one quarter. So those are the five major points of continued warranty by most builders. And we speak of them here in Southern California, it's probably the same way in other parts of the country. Uh, but uh, at least you know where we're coming from and getting to know, the key is getting to know the warranties 
of the builders in which you're servicing your clients. And it doesn't take too much. Many times you can go right online and find out where their warranty uh, disclosures are. And uh, sometimes even go into the uh, communities where they're building homes and you can find out what those warranties are. And that will prove to be very helpful if you just get to know it. And then as you express that information to the client, I promise you that probably eight or nine times out of 10, they know nothing or they haven't even read the warranty books. So you're there helping them to understand it and it's a great asset for your clients. And of course, it's uh, something that InterNACHI becomes famous for then as we have a actual logo for the 11th month warranty. Okay, let me take this uh, screen down. I have to stop just for a second uh, to share. And we're gonna move on over here to another show. I don't know why I have to do this. I think we just had a problem uh, in doing this. Okay, and let me see if I can get this other document I want up here. Hold on just one moment. Oh, no, it's not it. Hold on, sorry. Okay, give me a second here. Sorry about this technical glitch we're having. Okay, here we are. Okay. Now we got it. Okay, and let me just put this in front here. So AJ, can you see this document here? as focus, what is a warranty inspection? Yes. Yeah, okay, cool. Okay, cool. We're back on, back on the key here. So uh, let me just cover uh, some of the issues of warranty inspections as we go through this little list I made up here. So an 11 month warranty inspection, you know, just for the builder's warranty expires. We're trying to help homeowners to get as much work out of the builder as possible. And, uh, you know, whatever you're charging, or your warranty inspection, uh, it's going to come back uh, to that homeowner, your client, a hundredfold. I guarantee you, on the number of things that we find in these new homes, and uh, sometimes it can save them thousands, literally thousands of dollars, which really makes uh, this particular type of warranty a real asset for home inspectors. All right, so. Uh, in some cases, the warranty might extend to two years. We covered that. This inspection is critical in finding defects in the home that might have happened during the home ownership process or were not found before that. So just covering some of the common things that we often find, almost always, almost always, uh, we find issues with the roof. And here in California, the majority of our homes now being built are usually a tile. So. Uh, what we usually do, uh, because uh, some of these homes are really large out here in Southern California, in certain communities, we're just flying drones. And uh, we get the drone up and we take uh, some awesome pictures and uh, then we put it on, um, uh, on our screen and enlarge those sections of the roof. And almost instantly, we start finding the areas where the tiles have been cracked people who have walked on the roof or because out here on some parts of our Southern California coast, we get high winds. And, you know, out here we advertise, you know, that if you have high winds over 50 or 55 miles per hour, always good to get out and take a look at your roof because those high winds uh, many times will cause damage. You just basically lift the tiles up and shift them. And we have all different kinds of problems uh, with uh, roof tiles cracking and uh, slipping. So uh, the majority of uh, drone flights, we find issues with the tiles. Uh, we also find improper roof ventilations, installations. And uh, many times you'll find that maybe the builder hasn't painted the, uh, uh, the vent stack, or there is some issues with regards to the flashing around them. <clears throat> Our drone picks that up very quickly. Uh, the flashings in around the uh, uh, 
the roof where the valleys are, are very easy to pick out usually with the drone. And uh, it also helps us from walking on the roofs. And here's a key for you guys, is that there are some builders that while they are under your 11 month warranty, they don't want you walking on the roof. So be real careful if you're walking on the roof and you have a builder that says you walked on that roof. And then uh, basically they start telling the owner, uh, we're not gonna be covering. So be careful. And this is one reason here in Southern California because of all the high litigations, we usually do not walk on the tile roofs. We'll ladder off the side if we have to, and then get a good picture of the different uh, perspectives of the roof and fields, you know, left, right, front, middle, all the different fields of the roofing material. And uh, that usually suffices to get a number of areas for repair, and then the builder has to send up their roofer, and sometimes uh, they'll find additional issues as well. Uh, other common things that we find is missing insulation in the attic. You get up into those attics and find that the builder, you know, supposedly, you know, put some insulation up there, but it's not meeting uh, the required 12 inches, generally speaking. And so we're calling it out and the R value is too low for California. So the builder sends back the insulation crew. And this is another good thing for the builders that they have all of their contractors still under a mandate to return if they find defect during the first year. So many times uh, our calling out these issues is actually helping the builder build a better product. And then they get a better reputation as well because of the actual inspection. Leaking plumbing, we're always looking for that. Toilets, unfortunately, sometimes uh, because of the tile that the client has actually requested the builder to put in and the contractor, the flooring contractor will come in and put in the tile and he doesn't properly seal the toilet we're gonna to find toilet leaks. We use, uh, you know, of course our moisture meters down below and especially on the, on the upstairs toilets, always very important to give a moisture meter reading so that you know whether the seal is already busted and they're already having problems underneath that new toilet that was installed. Uh, the grout is gonna be a big one. Grout, you know, tends the first year to dry out and crack. So we're gonna find grout, uh, common to call out grout cracking and caulking uh, cracking all around the house, uh, the tiles, uh, especially in the bathroom and around the shower, especially in the corner shower of the pan, we're gonna get cracks, generally speaking, almost 100% of the time. And so calling that out in itself, you know, the homeowner loves it. He says, yeah, I saw those little things and I thought that they were normal. Nope, yep, let's get them repaired now. And you know, what's interesting is that builders know that you're gonna call this out. And it, it's no heat off their back to send in a, a crew for an hour. And that's all they do. A couple hours, and they go through the entire house and you put blue tape everywhere uh, where you found these little cracks and they love it because now they're in there and their guys know exactly where you called it out. And here's another key is that when you are going and you're putting blue tape, you're doing a blue tape marking, a good key to remember is what you, our crews do is that after we have blue taped uh, a room, we take a picture of every wall, you know, every wall, every ceiling after the blue tape, because that tells them where we actually put the blue tape. We've had guys go in uh, after us. In fact, we were doing an inspection the very day that someone was in there doing the repairs because the homeowner called. And we were, after the guy had gone through and made uh, corrections, we were going back after his work, putting blue tape up where he didn't do a complete job or he didn't, you know, he just missed it completely. And then as our guys walked out of the room, I saw with my own eyes, their contractor going in and pulling the blue tape off every place we placed it. And then I confronted him on it and I had my guys come back in, put the blue tape and take a picture. And uh, they hadn't taken a picture yet. I told them, we've taken pictures, buddy. You know, you gotta, you gotta do your job right. So the client sees that, they know that you're their advocate and it goes a long way for helping homeowners to have trust in your company that you're giving them a top rated service. Uh, and then uh, let's just talk a little bit about the minor cracks and stucco. It is true that builders under their warranty, for the most part, will not many times choose not to correct uh, stucco cracks that are hairline. And this is fine, but we still put them in our report under hairline. And uh, this gives the uh, client an opportunity to have in their report an area that they need to go back and check in about six months to a year to see if it's widened out. Usually builders will go ahead and correct it if it's 116th 
or wider. They do say in their warranty one eighth, but many times they'll come back and do one sixteenth of an inch. And you know, you can tell the homeowner the difference is the edge of a dime is one sixteenth, the edge of a quarter is one eighth. And that makes it really easy for homeowners, you know, to kind of put their eyes on the crack and see, is this hairline? Uh, and then the other issue with hairlines, if it's quite an extensive a number uh, uh, of linear feet of hairline, what the building industry standard here is, uh, the general rule, I, if I'm getting this right, is uh, I believe 60 linear feet per 1500 square foot home. So if you're walking around and finding about uh, 60 linear feet of hairline, then you know that you're probably around standard still and it's nothing to be concerned about. But if you have a 1500 square foot home and you're finding 160, 200 linear feet of hairline, we've got some issues and it should be reported to the builder for further evaluation under their first year fit and finish warranty. Uh, then other things inside cabinet damage, always we find something going on with cabinets, the way people are putting in cabinets uh, these days. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of people are using this, uh, uh, you know, foil, heat foil a laminate, and uh, they find people are finding that it delaminates around heat. So as you can identify the type of cabinetry that they have, you can give fair warning. Look, it looks real good right now, but I want to show you something, and you show them why that um, uh, foil laminate uh, is not the best cabinetry. Usually homeowners know that, that they come in, came in on the lower level of the entry level. It's usually warranted by, uh, well, warranted for one year by the manufacturer, but they say that it should last them eight to 10 years, but many times it doesn't even last a year. It starts to delaminate, and this is the time to get it fixed and replaced, and hopefully it, uh, with the uh, watch over keeping heat and steam uh, away from the laminate, it will last you know, as it's uh, intended to last. Appliance damages, all of those are covered by uh, first year fit and finish. So I put in a, a checklist here that we usually offer our homeowners just to keep a, an eye on different things. Some things we don't explain everything to them because it's a little bit uh, too cumbersome to try to um, you know, explain everything, but I give them a little list here, things to look for and things that we have checked. So obviously windows, doors, all penetrations of the uh, structure we're looking for, especially on the outside, we go to all the hose faucets, is there, uh, is there penetration open? Uh, anything that they put on the walls and they haven't properly sealed around those penetrations, that's a call out for the builder. They can't have an open penetration. Uh, and then another big one that we find here in California is weep holes. Right here, the weep holes uh, of the uh, stucco. So, you know, the bottom of the stucco has the weep hole, weep screed there. And we take a mirror and we go around uh, the majority of the structure and we're looking for weep holes not being covered by uh, the slop coat or the brown coat, uh, texture coat of the stucco. Most of our homes out here are stucco. Uh, there are some other types of cladding that we use out here that's popular, you know. A brick veneer, stone veneer in some parts of the home. And we're looking for uh, different issues with those components as well. But I'll tell you the truth that uh, many times we do find that builders have contractors that are putting on their stucco and they're putting it on so fast and they're coming up with an upstroke from the bottom and they're covering the weeps, uh, the weep holes. And of course that causes problem uh, with moisture intrusion and the uh, improper ventilation of the stucco. Underneath. So we call that out and builders are usually very good about coming back and correcting that. They take, uh, you know, it's, it's hard labor for their guys, but they come out, they get on their hands and their knees and they're out there scrubbing, you know, scraping off the stucco underneath. Uh, sometimes what you'll find um, later on is that that strip of stucco that's on that weep screed will actually come off in sections because the first year they didn't have it cleaned off and then it just falls off. People see that and they say, my home's falling apart. And we just tell them, no, it's just the part of the coat that's basically was put under there. It doesn't need to be there. It's not affecting the structure. In fact, it shouldn't have been put there in the first place. But you have to be careful what you say. So you don't want to you know, get people you know, paranoid about their builders either. So you want to be the builder's friend so that they uh, let you come on to their property, especially with the new construction and uh, warranty inspections. 
Uh, we look at the paint application, of course, uh, look for any window damages, that the windows were installed correctly. Uh, it's hard to tell sometimes after the uh, pre-drywall phase if they were actually flashed properly, but sometimes you can tell by just uh, the way they were installed. Not uncommon sometimes to find the windows installed uh, actually upside down. We have the weep holes up on the top instead of down below. And uh, it's kind of a funny thing to find, but every now and then we find it. So we're just kind of careful on these uh, inspections, looking for any of those uh, weird defects that you might find. Uh, plumbing fixtures, of course, electrical equipment, now outlets we test. Really, we're kind of above the standard of practice. We test every outlet on these new homes. Uh, and there's good reason for that. Uh, we do find that sometimes there's an occasional outlet that really just doesn't work and it's not wired correctly or it has a bad ground. And it's an easy fix for the builder. Uh, and of course, it helps the homeowner say, man, those guys are really thorough, which is what our company uh, strives to project, a thorough inspection. Into the garage, here's an area, I'm gonna show you uh, pictures later on here in just a little bit. Uh, you know, there's the firewall and you go into these new homes and unfortunately sometimes they have put up the drywall so fast that they really haven't covered uh, the sill plate and the sill plate is a combustible component. And so the drywall comes down to where the, uh, you have the uh, um, uh, sill plate, is actually exposed and the drywall is just above it. So you have this large gap in between and people will say, is that gap supposed to be there? And while it's not really, um, you know, a major issue unless it's a, a firewall and uh, then usually it is because uh, uh, the way they've constructed it, uh, they were too quick and they didn't uh, complete uh, the component installation. So that's a big call out. And it's a big fine because it is a firewall that uh, was not completed and there needs to be fire stop there so that that uh, particular combustible component is not exposed. Uh, we find other things, uh, you know, of course, you know, you're gonna look at the uh, installation of the heater and the air conditioning HVAC unit, the air handler, that there's no leaks and condensation lines are good. Uh, many times, you know, if the first year you'll find that there are, and which we'll show you a couple of pictures here in just a bit, that it was not installed correctly and is a good call out for the builder and helps them to evaluate the contractors that they're using on their build as well. Uh, the interior walls, the bathrooms, the kitchens, uh, we're checking everything in those areas, which you, uh, you uh, other fellow inspectors no doubt do as well. But unfortunately, we do find things like um, even the drain uh, poppers don't, don't, aren't working properly. Um, or the mixing valves uh, on showers that aren't properly set. And so you don't get, people have been taking showers with 108 you know, degree water and they're wondering why is it just not hot in the shower? And uh, well, it's a good call out and uh, people will thank you up and down because now they get actually hot showers instead of the lukewarm showers that they thought, well, I thought it was a, an energy saving device or something like that. And you can help them see it's a mixing valve that wasn't, properly set. Uh, here's another issue. Uh, make sure that when you're in the electrical panel, you know, you are looking carefully at these new panels. Uh, we do have the call out of the square D, you know, that has been defective. And we do have a number of builders out here in California that have used square D. In fact, that's all they've used. And they're having to repair or replace rather a number of their square D panels as we're following, uh, finding on our inspections. And of course, we're checking and explaining the GFCIs and AFCIs to the homeowners. Many of them don't know the difference. And that's a big uh, plus for them to understand how their electrical system works. We check the plumbing. Uh, going into the attic, of course, uh, we find many times on these new builds, we find trusses that are damaged, gusset plates that are disconnected. It's not hard to find them, but it goes a long way for the owner because we found it early and now the builder can uh, repair those issues. And it's impressive uh, because most owners don't go into their attic and then you're taking pictures for them. This is what your attic looks like. And uh, then they find a sense of comfort that you found those issues as well. We talked a little bit about roof. And then finally, the foundation. Most of our foundations out here in California are slab on grade. So we don't have uh, you know, any 
The older houses have the crawl space, but not the new ones for the most part. So it's easy for us to inspect them. And we're looking for the post tension issues that many times you'll find the builder somehow, you know, their post tension um, uh, penetrations on the exterior of the stem wall outside going around the building, you'll find that there's holes. And that is a, a decent call out for builders because those should not be exposed. It tends to rust and causes uh, the cracking on the foundation uh, prematurely. And uh, the drainage towards the foundation. We're always looking for drainage issues and uh, the way sprinklers are put in by the builder. And uh, what will help the homeowner's understanding of the builder's responsibility versus a subcontractor that the homeowner hired to do uh, landscaping or hardscaping in their back of their homes. So that's basically a list of things that I put together that hopefully will be of help to you. And we'll have this up on the site. Uh, AJ will have this document. He can post it for us if he wants. Okay, now let me go back. I have to get out of this view, unfortunately, and we'll change views. And I'm gonna take you to a few of the inspections that we've had uh, by Focus Home Inspection. Let's go back. All right, here we go. Okay, so we come back to this screen here. And just sharing that. Okay, there's that. We already went through that. And uh, this is your, you know, 25 points of inspection by InterNACHI. I think we've already covered that as well. So let's go to a few of our inspections that we've performed here. We use the Spectora reporting system and have developed uh, an inspection for new homes which helps us to call out a number of things that we might not call out on a regular inspection because of uh, cosmetic issues. Remember even cosmetic issues, for the most part, if it's not caused by the homeowner during the first year, the builder will come in and do their best to uh, repair uh, the cosmetic issues. So just some of the areas that we have found, I pulled up a few of the reports that I thought they had some interesting pictures for you things that you would find and obviously these are you know new install novice mistakes by some of the contractors uh you're going to find tiles that are cracked broken and slipped uh, this is a you know a 10 month this is 10 months so you know it was there when they actually purchased the home and the way that tiles are set and slipped will sometimes need to be corrected this is one thing i hate Right here, you'll see the gutter, and it's uh, actually uh, draining out over the uh, tiles. Uh, builders, if they're installing gutters, go the cheap way, and they, uh, while this may not be a real critical issue, sometimes it actually aims towards the flashing, like we've seen them aim uphill. We've seen um, uh, uh, spouts, drain spouts come down and actually face the flashing like right over here and then going into the flashing the corner flashing here and uh, you know that's going to cause a leak and eventually so we try to encourage the builder you know to change the direction of the flow if they're going to keep it on their roofing material uh, sometimes homeowners want the builder to actually extend uh, the drain spout uh, to the lower gutter which uh, is between them and the builder uh, flashings uh, we find uh, sometimes they just didn't install it correctly. I mean, you wonder who saw that and let that go and said, oh, that looks good. It's a fairly easy call out and your eyes are glancing and you find them very quickly when you walk up to the house. Uh, some of the exterior things that we're finding, here's a common thing here in Southern California I'd like to cover with you. This is uh, cracking, minor cracking versus major cracking that we call out for the builder to repair. We have here in California, a number of builders that, you know, will lo they loved in their design to use what we call styrofoam pop-out features. These pop-out features are around windows, they're trim uh, features, they're off the side of the balcony. Uh, you guys who are old home builders, you know, years ago, we just used uh, wood, you know, two by fours to do this type of trim. But now because of the expense of wood uh, and these become very popular, this is just styrofoam looks like wood 
but they're easily damaged. And here you see the drip edge. They had a problem with the drip edge is what we're pointing out here. The drip edge off the balcony here uh, is causing premature discoloration of the paint, which is easy to call out. And the builder will actually come out and they will correct this issue, correct the issue that starts it. And upon further evaluation, uh, this whole section here was changed out by the builder. Underneath this styrofoam feature, there's also another drip uh, ledge here, right here. And if it's not installed properly, they get um, uh, runoff down here, and then you have discoloration underneath the pop out feature, which is ugly and it starts to prematurely fade the painting of the stucco features. So uh, just take a little closer look at that. And you'll see the way it's already coming apart here. And uh, that's also the deterioration from UV light and the fading of the paint, it just starts to peel. And this is when it becomes more critical here in the corner, you'll find some of these chips on this styrofoam feature, call them out because once they're open, they deteriorate much faster. And um, then you have, uh, replacement issues. The builder needs to come out and actually replace the feature. And people sue over that stuff. So the builder tries to help people, you know, understand the limitations and, you know, the peeling. This is definitely not the homeowner that did this. This is just a, a premature uh, delamination of the paint from this particular feature. And you can see the staining coming down on the back side here. So there was the slope and the way the water moisture kind of creeps underneath and causes the staining to appear. Uh, let's go down a little bit more here. Uh, we do have sometimes the uh, brick features, uh, veneer, and we're always checking the veneer. Many times this veneer starts to uh, come apart. They did order around it and they're easy fixes for the builder. Uh, homeowners sometimes don't even see them, but as you're checking the veneer features, Always good to call it out because eventually this one was just about ready to fall off. You can put your hand there and just move it a little bit and you can see that it's almost a half inch crack uh, from the veneer. Moving down on some other things. Okay, here's the area that I wanted to tell you about as well. This is a builder issue. So what the builder did is he put a drip line in here uh, and you can see it right here in the corner of this picture. And that drip line, also runs very close uh, to the foundation here. Uh, and so right in this area, they're getting efflorescence and it's uh, draining right, or it's actually watering the foundation. So you know they're gonna have some problems down the road if they don't uh, correct this. Uh, this particular issue can be seen here a little closer here. And just taking a simple picture, the builder had his crew out there changing the way that they installed the front irrigation system on this home. Uh, the homeowner didn't even know it existed, the problem existed. So a good call out there for you builder or your inspectors. Uh, let's see, uh, this is a good one here, uh, AC wall inlet box deficiency. You know, this is a brand new unit, right? And uh, so the AC guy came out, put the little boot on and then put his line set in there but he failed to seal this. The boot did not have a proper seal around it. And so it was uh, obviously, you know, an area where you see it's already broken away. They put it in and seal the penetration and uh, we're having rats, little mice that are craw crawling up the line set uh, into the attic here. People wonder, where is it coming? Well, we can probably tell you one place it's coming. And uh, you can see right here in the corner too, uh, it looks like uh, some more stucco was just slopped in on underneath this as well. So it's just poor quality workmanship, just too quick. They weren't paying attention to the details. Uh, first year, we're always calling out air filters. I know all you guys are too, uh, whether it's a first year <laughs> or not. Uh, AC drain pan. Uh, un it's unbelievable how many times we will find that there is no uh, catch pan under some of these applications of the HVAC in the attic. They forgot to put in the drain pan. And it's a simple call out, but you know, what a heck of a job to put in after afterwards. So 
but the homeowner doesn't know it. And then we call it out. Sometimes they're already having leaking that is occurring uh, with the uh, condensation line and they have issues in their drywall underneath the area. Okay, here's another common thing. Look at this. Uh, this is a brand new build, you know, not even a year and the garage door is already fading. So here's the problem with this here in California. They put in the white panels on these sectional garage doors and then uh, they paint them. So it's not baked in. It's not an enamel baked and bake, you know, onto the panel. It's just a application of paint after uh, it has been installed. And you can see that basically panels are already starting to discolor and to fade and um, good call out for the builder to come back out, reapply the paint because it is premature in its failure, the paint failure. You find those, good call out. Some of the odd things that you, you wouldn't call it out usually on, you know, uh, you know, here's a 10 year old home and you have a little paint, you know, discrepancy, you know, it's all cosmetic, but for the 11th month warranty, cosmetic items are on the table. Uh, this is a, a number of the minor issues that you'll always find here with common cracks here. This is nothing structural, it's just cosmetic. And so the builder will come out and will improve in their sealing of these little airline cracks around window frames, uh, door frames, things of that nature. Here's a good call out. I, oh yeah, this is the grout, grout cracking, new grout. It's gonna crack the first year. And uh, around cabinets, cabinets start to separate. People think their cabinets are coming apart, but this is just caulking, finished caulking around the half round that they put in there, half round uh, uh, edge. And uh, then they put the caulking and it's dried. And because of the settling, it shrinks, the new material shrinks and you have the caulking crack. You can certainly look inside the cabinet. It was installed correctly, but it's just a matter of reapplication of caulking in this case. All right, here's another big thing. Uh, just bringing this to attention uh, here on this particular application of the tile shower. Uh, you know, usually we also will do a pan test. So we'll, everybody knows how to do that. Log up the uh, drain there. And then uh, we have a little device that we put in and then fill the shower pan with water and the water goes over into the drain so it doesn't drain over the, uh, the edge here, the curb. But then we start to look for any failure of uh, the uh, pan, shower pan. And this is awesome, especially if the shower is on an exterior wall, uh, because immediately you start seeing the issue, indications of failure, pan failure. And also uh, down below underneath the house or underneath the first story, if this is a second story, you'll see discoloration. Got to be careful though, you don't want to damage, cause more damage than uh, than has already been made. And then of course, um, we're looking at the dam uh, and the leaks that sometimes, you know, they install these shower doors. Uh, the shower door starts to leak and it comes right out. And this is an area of damage that will notably be caused right here where the drywall meets the tile. And you'll have a deterioration of this particular component because the door is not properly sealed or the glass is not properly sealed. See if we can get you some more. Let me go to another uh, case here and find you some more interesting things that you like to see. I'm kind of running out of time. I'm going to go skip to a couple of these other things uh, that I found of interest. You might find interest too. Same things that we're always finding here. Damage that needs to be called out. Here is something that some builders will tell help uh, the homeowner to appreciate that even though this AC condenser unit is not level, uh, they can come out and re-level it, but it's because the homeowner has not done any landscaping on the exterior of their backyard. And this is basically considered a temporary, uh, temporary plate or uh, shelf for the AC. So it starts to lean and the builder, you know, is not yet responsible when they hire someone to come out and do their landscaping a owner wants to make sure that he gets an HVAC, licensed HVAC technician, not a landscaper to uh, move that AC condenser because the builder will say, you moved it without permission by the builder or the use 
of a uh, licensed provider and you have just lost your warranty on it. So be careful in helping them to understand that it's their responsibility to landscape around it to keep it from becoming unlevel in its application, which is shown here. Uh, let's see, let me go down here. Oh, here's an indication of that firewall. This is the garage and the drywall that we were talking about. I'll give you a picture of that. And right up underneath, you see the stem wall, then the sill plate, and it's not properly uh, sealed or finished. So this is a good call out for the builder. The builder appreciated it, brought his contractor back, and they filled this area in with proper fire stop. Okay, and let's see. Differences between cracks. This is a new landscaping by a builder, hardscaping, and it had cracked, and there was displacement starting. So this whole section got called out, and the homeowner had it all redone, which is nice. Uh, once again, uh, the structure, you know, <clears throat> having their line, uh, irrigation lines uh, for the landscaping put too close, not properly done, close tension. And let me go to another report here. We can call out one more real quick. Oh, here's a good one. Um, so you go to the panel, right? Here in California, we have a, uh, most of our homes are now installed with alarms. And here's something, uh, usually it is okay to put a lock stop, uh, a lotto device, L-O-T-O, uh, lockout device, tag out device on the panel where the smoke uh, or alarm, fire alarm is located. The only problem with this one is this is not the correct type of lotto. So uh, out here in California, the ones that they put on these particular breakers are red and they're designed just to keep you from shutting them off, but it will allow the breaker uh, to uh, trip if needed. This one will not. So basically we caught the wrong type of lotto being used, wrong type of uh, lotto device being used on this particular panel, which is a very simple fix, but it is a safety thing. So a uh, garage door, you know, all their insulation around the garage door, uh, below the garage door, here's the builder, you know, had some guy put it in and put a little hole. I guess he was thinking that this is gonna be good for drainage, but hey, it's good for mice as well. So they had to come back and correct that whole thing. Uh, anyway, uh, and this is up in the attic, damaged trusses that we talked about, gusset plates that were coming apart. Always good to find those in new homes. Uh, builder uh, client uh, satisfaction becomes higher that way. And uh, anyway, I know you guys uh, know the paint deficiencies. Many times when they're painting these houses, they put uh, you know the flat paint where it shouldn't be or the semi-gloss where it shouldn't be or where it should be. And um, we call it out and the homeowner gets a whole new repaint job and it saves them obviously hundreds if not thousands of dollars so anyway i come to the end of the hour at the end of the hour i hope that this has been informative for you all and uh looks like um you know at the end all of us appreciate internachi being the host of this particular seminar here or this webinar and uh make sure you get your your 10 items here, if you've already done these 10 classes, make sure you uh, advertise that you're an 11 month warranty inspector and use some of the keys that we've given to you. Uh, and I wish you all well and hope that your business thrives. Uh, um, any questions out there about this type of inspection? Hopefully yeah. it did all of you yeah, well. And it's to type it out. Yeah, you have to type it out. Um, and just maybe just a, a, a cue here, you know, when, um, uh, you know, the main difference between the 10 and 11 months is not much difference in the inspection process, but uh, coming back at the 11th month, we encourage you to encourage your clients to have the 11th month, give them a little discount as well, because it's gonna be easier for you to inspect. You've already had an inspection on it before, probably goes a little quicker on the 11th month and you'll know quickly what to look for and see if any repairs have been made, especially on the exterior. Uh, builders, you know, sometimes hesitate. There are some builders that will actually come out and correct anything that's even a little less than 1 16th, but they argue not to correct the hairline, which they have the right to because 
then you create a webbing effect on the um, stucco and it starts to look worse if they're not a really good stucco technician, it looks worse than having the little hairlines. So having the knowledge to explain to your clients, you know, the differences in the types of repairs that we're requesting for them. And then when they see the list of repairs, they know that they've, you know, received the best type of inspection and the value is plain. And James Meadows, my goodness, have you seen water entrance into the service panel due to uh, weather heads not being sealed? Uh, now, we have not. What I have seen is plants, uh, vines, you know, growing into the panels. They're brand new panels. And some of these homeowners love to plant vines and the vines somehow make it into the panels. But I've not, so far with the new build, uh, the 11th month inspections, we have not seen uh, uh, moisture intrusion into the panels, the service panel. Uh, and, you know, it is true that depending on the builder, Sometimes we can go into a community uh, and we have, you know, word spreads that were there giving these inspections, especially if people are pleased with the inspection, they spread it to their neighbors. And um, sometimes certain builders have a contractor that keeps doing the same thing over and over again on their builds and the builder supervisor never caught it. And then we get there and we catch it. And then what they'll do is that builder will actually send out a local rep. We found it more than once. They'll send out their local reps into the field and just start going uh, from door to door, checking this particular component, which uh, then saves everybody. And uh, hopefully the word spreads that you're there checking. Uh, we've had one condo community where we've got a number of inspections uh, being performed and we found the same thing the way that they installed the um, a gas supply line to their stoves uh, was incorrect, and um, so we kept we found one, we found a second one, we found a third one, and then by that time the builder had been getting the repair requests, and they sent out you know an APB to their local rep, and he went and found probably another twenty homes that needed to be corrected right away. Uh, and it goes to safety hazards. So you're really uh, on top of it when you can identify the builder's uh, contractor that had performed that type of work. And from Greg, is there any way to find out when new homes are reaching the 11th month warranty? So here's the key. Uh, you can actually go online and uh, put in a builder, go to the builder site. And uh, it, you can find out where their new homes are being built. They'll have advertisements because they're building in this community or that community, wherever you're servicing. And that's where you hit. And basically, when you get the notice of where builders are currently building and selling, basically they're in the selling phase now. Now you know when to mark your calendar. And you can advertise for the new construction and then uh, about seven to eight months after, advertise for your 11th month construction. If you have a realtor that um, has access to MLS and uh, they're good friends with them, many times they can look up where new construction has been um, created by builders and start looking up close of escrow dates uh, by MLS. So that's another way that you might be able to drum up some business in that area. Thanks, Greg. I know Greg, he's a good man. And okay, well, it looks like uh, at least we were able to get a couple of you to stimulate some questions and we appreciate you being with us tonight.